It's always a much anticipated day, but after so much disruption to the school year, A-level results day felt more fraught than usual. I'm now not going to Durham, which was my dream uni, and I'm not doing the course I wanted to do. Predicted grades and moderation meant some felt short-changed. I've never got a date in my life ever. I just don't want a date. While others felt the revised system worked in their favour. Yeah, I got in. <laughs> I got the grades that I needed anyway. I'm, I'm really relieved. I know that I've got um, good results set for me. I'm nervous as well. Yeah. At this West London school, these students were all hoping to get to uni. For the past four years, they've been helped towards that path by a charity called The Access Project that gives free tuition and support. Good luck. Thank you very Betty. Much. Thank you. I was nervous in the morning, but yeah, it's all good now. And I got into my firm choice. I'm happy with my results, but I need to make sure it's enough to get me to my firm choice university. But um, if, if I still don't get into my firm choice, I'll, still, I'll use my MOOCs because they were better than what I've got now. For students whose results weren't quite what they were expecting, there was a feeling teachers should have had the final say. At the end of the day, the people who know the students well are the teachers and not ministers in government, I believe. After months out of the classroom, some school leaders say the late decisions on grades caused anxiety and confusion. I was slightly uncomfortable with the, bringing into the mix that of mock, mock examination results to, to assist uh, in, in, in A-level students getting into university simply because I think mock exams are used in different ways in different schools. In some schools, students were able to see the grade their teacher would have given them alongside the actual grade that they were awarded by the exams board. In England, just 58.7% of grades stayed the same as the teacher-assessed grade. 39.1% were downgraded, most of those by one grade, and 2.2% were actually upgraded. Overall, the pass rate, that's A star through to E, went up by 0.7% compared to last year. It's been a year like no other for Britain's students. Now, most are just hoping a bright future awaits. So, Jess, if you're a pupil or a parent for that matter, so much of what happens now depends on which part of the UK you live in. That's right, and for many that's going to feel like a little bit of a lottery, isn't it? Um, there are appeals processes in place right across the UK, but the way that they operate is a little bit different uh, depending on the nation. So let's take a look at those now. Now, in England, your school can appeal your grade using a mock exam result. And there is also the option to sit an exam in October. In Wales, you can't sit A-levels, but there has been an extra guarantee made that no student's A-level results will be lower than the AS grade that they achieved last year. In Northern Ireland, again, you can appeal using a mock exam, but there is no option to sit exams later this year. Now, the situation does seem a little bit confusing, but UCAS, who oversee admissions, have said that help and support is available. If they haven't got their university place, then obviously get in touch with the university straight away, explain that you're appealing, talk about your mock results, and universities are being incredibly flexible and will do their best to hold places open while the appeal happens. Now, we did see the Scottish Government do an embarrassing U-turn over this issue. Is it likely the other nations might follow? At the, no, at the moment, we're not hearing that that's going to happen at all. But today, the Westminster government in particular have come under fire for what's being labelled by some as inconsistency and inequality. Now, we've learned that class sizes with students, uh, less, fewer than 15 students, have not had to have the teachers' grade predictions moderated. Now, what that actually means is that potentially uh, private schools have been biased uh, when it comes to the grading system because, as we know, they tend to have smaller classes, whereas, for example, a, a busy sixth form typically would have many more than 15 students and those grades, therefore, would have been moderated. Uh, today, we spoke to the Education Secretary and he said that he has done his best in what has been challenging circumstances. We've uh, done everything we can do to make sure that we have a fair and robust system that has checks and balances in place. That's why Ofqual did the largest public consultation that they've ever done to make sure that when they created this system that it was uh, fair for all. But making sure that we have an appeals process that's fair for students has equally been incredibly important for me. Look, I think everybody agrees that the circumstances this year have been exceptional and it's been very, very tough on students. What many are calling for today is to give them a break and make things as easy as possible for them to carry on into their future and to achieve their goals and dreams. Jess, thank you.